Game one of the Western Conference Finals is in the books, and it is one-sided. Golden State 112 to 87. They had balanced scoring. You see Steph with 21, but Wiggins and Poole each with 19. They were terrific in the first half. That duo holding Luka to 20 points in total as the Warriors take game one of this best of seven series. All right, let's bring in Bill Ryder for some perspective. Bill, you watched game one. What did you take away from this opener of this series? Yeah, Jim, two, uh, two really brutal combinations for, for the Mavs. One, everybody not named Luka Doncic was awful at the start of the game. Just could not hit a lot of open threes. Right. And really, I think, threw that Mavericks team off balance and put a lot of pressure on Luka Doncic. And then two, give credit to the best defense statistically in the NBA. The Warriors made it really difficult on Luka. I know he put up some points, but he was very inefficient. They threw zone at him. They threw a box and one at him. They threw, obviously, man coverage yet. I mean, this was one of those nights where the Warriors had a plan and they executed defensively against Luka and none of Luka's teammates were able to step up and help. Bill, um, when you're watching this game, Luka had 18 in the first half. It was a nine-point game at the break. So you had a sense that Dallas was perhaps going to make a run in the second half, but it went the other way, a quick 10-0 run at the start of the third quarter. When you watch, and I want to, I wish I could use a better word, the spurt ability of this Golden State team, the ability to kind of hit a one or two minute span where they could score 10 straight points like they did on this night, is that what a team like Dallas has to guard against? Because a, a nine point game can quickly become a 20 point game in a blink of an eye. I mean, you said it. I've been to so many Warriors games over the years of their runs, Jim, that even though I was I was on the Luka over, and he was at 18, and I thought to myself, I'm in so much trouble because you're right, and you're, you absolutely said it. The ability of that Warriors team to go in spurts is in the historical record down the NBA, and often in the postseason, it is the third quarter where they make their hay and they make their move. They are conditioned and trained to believe they can come out in the second half and go after teams. So if you're a team like Dallas, even though being down nine on a very poor shooting night in the first half, right, you feel like you're in striking distance, that's the illusion the Warriors put you through. You can be a five or six at on the road if you're playing the Warriors, and it actually is even. That, that Golden State team, they're too good at runs. They're too good at ball movement. They wear defenses down. They're very well coached. You said it. They will go on 8-0 runs, 10-0 runs, 12-2 runs, all of which happened in the second half. You've got to be prepared that it's going to be a brutal and long night, and you have to make sure you are mistake-free if you're a team like the Mavericks. And this is a Golden State team that had seven players hit for double figures. I was I just jotted this note down from the first half. Uh, Wiggins, their big three, if you will, in the first half. Wiggins, 15. Poole, 9. Looney, 8. They got 32 points from that trio. Those aren't their big-name players. What does that say about this team that they can get contributions from other players not named Steph, not named Clay, not named Draymond, and still win these games? And that's what they got in the first half. I really think it speaks to the uniqueness of Steph Curry's greatness. And this is not a shot at Luka Doncic. I think Luka is incredible. But Luka's a, Luka's a hero ball basketball player, and he'll get guys the ball but without a lot of touches. And if you watch Steph when he doesn't have the ball, constant movement. Same for Clay Thompson constant movement and that creates so much space and frankly the just the defensive effort you have to put on Steph Curry and where you have to guard him the moment he comes across the half court line you have to guard him it creates openings opportunities easy looks easy baskets for all those guys you mentioned and so Warriors officials have talked to me about and parts of that coaching staff how easy it is for that team to get into rhythm to get early easy baskets for a guy like Andrew Wiggins, we saw this, get some open threes, and if he hits those, he's got some confidence to see a guy like Kevon Looney get some easy buckets because he's cutting to the basket, and obviously guys like Steph and Clay and Draymond are great passers, and that gets him in rhythm. You're right, they are deep, and they're constructed in a way where the ball moves, and they have a star in Steph Curry, and I know we say this about a lot of stars, but it's never been true on the level of, of Curry, who makes life so much easier offensively for his teammates because of the space he creates and the way that he facilitates that team moving the ball. I think that's well said. The spacing on this team is second to none in the NBA. You kind of called this out, though, if you will. You sensed that Dallas you know, was going to come up short in this game one. They had the blowout in game seven in Phoenix. We've seen 
a lot of blowouts in this postseason where teams just kind of let go of the rope. This game won a 25-point differential. So all that being said, what does Dallas need to do to steady the ship for game two and moving forward in this series? Not panic, and I said this before the show. If you, I, 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 for me, I, I'm not betting on the actual series. I, I think it's too tough to call. But if you like Dallas, this is the time to bet it. They lost their opening game sure. of the postseason against the Utah Jazz, won that series. They lost by a couple possessions in game one against the Suns, and they lost by, if I, if I remember right, 20, I think it was, in game two against the Suns, obviously won that series. Here's what the Mavericks have to do. Luka's got to attack the, the rim a little bit more. I know he's going to do his step-back threes, and they're unguardable when he's on, but he's got to mix up what he does offensively, and he's got to get help. I mean, the guys on that basketball team cannot start, I think it was 2 of 12, guys not, not named Luka Doncic, I, mean, I think it was 2 of 13, to start the game. They need help from other players. They need Luka to be a little more efficient, is the, is, I mean, is, is obvious, but he needs just to attack that Warriors defense with a little less three-point shooting and, and at times even panic. They need to believe in their defense, and I think they'll remind themselves. I don't think they're going to be scared. They've been through this. They've been down. They've shown they're resilient. They basically get back to business and do a better job in game two, and the series remains, I think, still wide open. Yeah, to back that point, Luka was 6 of 18 from the floor, a player you can really pinpoint in terms of what you were talking about. Maxi Kleber, 1 of 4 from the floor. They need players like him to step up. He's Bill Ryder. He covers the NBA and is always on the mark. Bill, we appreciate the insight. All right, this is what it looks like. Game one, opening quarter. Steph, well, he wasn't curry hot, but he caught fire after that. Six of 11 from the floor the rest of the game after that opening quarter, including hitting on three of five from beyond the arc. 17 of his 21 coming after that opening quarter. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.